We have here in the studio with us today uh, Rudy Lopez and DJ Yoon, and you guys are on a bus tour right now uh, called the Fast for Families Across America. Rudy, what's that about? Well, it's uh, a tour, as you said, across America, taking the message of the urgency around finding a solution to our broken immigration system, the urgency around passing comprehensive immigration reform, and the urgency around stopping the suffering of our families that are as a result of our broken system. And where are you from, Rudy? Uh, I'm right uh, from a small steel town right outside of Chicago called East Chicago, Indiana. I work out of Washington, uh, but um, now part of the Fast for Families tour. And DJ? Yeah, I'm from Los Angeles. I'm part of this West Coast family. There's two bus tours going on at the same time. There's a northern route, which you're on, and mm -hmm. there's a southern route. You're, our, both buses are going to end up where? In D.C.? Washington, D.C.? Yeah, that's right. So the idea is that we're going to go, each one of us on our own routes, but together we're going to hit over 75 congressional districts, talking to community members, business leaders, faith leaders, and also meeting with uh, the, the members of their, in their offices themselves or, in, or in sometimes the staff members. But in each case, what we're doing is taking the stories that we heard in the tent in front of the Capitol where we were uh, in the late part of last year, and also hearing more stories when we get to each one of these communities that are really at the heart of this important issue. So then together, we're going to meet on April 9th in D.C. and have one large mobilization when we get there. Rudy, where have you been so far, and where do you plan on going after you leave Bend? Yeah. So the tour started uh, in Los Angeles, DJ's home turf, um, last Monday, so a week ago. And then we went from Los Angeles to Santa Clarita. We then went to Palmdale, uh, made our way over to as a Bakersfield next, and uh, then went up to uh, San Francisco, Reno, uh, and now we're here. And then from here, we go over to the state of Washington, where we hit Vancouver, We'll then go to Yakima, Spokane, and then make our way over to Idaho. So you met with a, st a staff member for Congressman Greg Ralden. Uh, we did. Uh, we certainly did. And uh, it was a, a good meeting. You know, we went in with uh, some of the constituents, a couple of a business owner, a faith leader, and also uh, a faith leader and member of a, of a college. We sat down to talk about the importance of moving it forward, but also to really impress upon Congressman Walden's staff that we need some movement, we need some action. And he was very receptive, uh, listened to what we had to say, and uh, I thought really understood the need for some type of action. We understand that we may not agree on all the different policy points, but we all agree that something needs to get done. So in order for that to happen, we need to start somewhere. Now, the principles that were released about a month ago, that was an important step. But we need to be able to have some type of concrete legislation that we can react to and come to some type of agreement where we can move forward. DJ, could you t tell us what are some of the principles that you're looking at? I mean, when we talk about immigration reform, it's obviously this vast thing and it can go any number of directions. Where would you all like to see it go? I think for us and for many Americans, I think immigration is about family. You know, people who come here to provide a better life for their family, better opportunity for their children. So bottom line is we have a working people working hard for their family and we have a more than mil uh, 11 million people living here. But just because they do not have a paper, you know, they live with, you know, fear, their children with so much talent, they cannot contribute to this country. So more than anything, uh, really make sure that they are part of this community and they are part of this country. So, you know, stop the deportation, you know, stop the breaking of the family. So provide them a better opportunity. They are hardworking family. But also, you know, there are more than 4 million families are separated because of the immigration backlog. They've been waiting, waiting like more than a decade. For example, you know, Filipino American citizens to be reunited with their brothers and sisters, they have to wait 22 years. So that is a, a lot of issue with the immigration. So the system is broken. So we need to fix it. But bottom line is keeping the families together. On one hand, I know that President Obama visited the tent in Washington, D.C., where you had members of your organization fasting. But That's we also right. But we also know that deportations under the Obama administration are higher 
than ever. I think they've dropped a little bit mm-hmm. in recently, but still in terms of overall numbers. The president and the first lady, when they came to visit us the day after Thanksgiving, which was uh, great to have them there, uh, we made sure that uh, he heard that message and he heard it directly from us. And as much as we see him as an important ally as we move this forward and he is committed to comprehensive immigration reform, one of the most important things that he can do as an ally is to stop those deportations. So uh, he has a whole set of powers that he can employ, whether it's being able because of so many incidences that have come up in these detention centers, he can call for an investigation and a moratorium. He could expen- uh, expand deferred action, the DACA piece that he did for the Dreamers and he did for military families. Why don't we talk about expanding that? And the other thing we can do, you know, they keep talking about this bed quota. What, how do we do something about that? Because the fact that there is a quota that's based on how many people were essentially incarcerating or detaining is to me absolutely against the American values and principles that we have as a nation. How are we going to set a a quota based upon human suffering? So those are the things we impressed upon the president and we hope that he's going to take some action on it. But we're not leaving it there. We believe the best solution to – Um, and the deportations is comprehensive immigration reform. You have a number of organizations such as unions, churches, and human rights organizations that are standing behind you and helping you. Who are some of those people, those groups that are helping you out with this? There are so many, you know, labor group, SEIU, and then AFL-CIO, but also faith community, you know, church world service, faith in public life, you know, evangelical, and Catholic, but also many community-based organizations like Kausa, Pikun, also like a CCC firm and Naka. So, so many diverse, you know, immigrant community and you know community-based group on the face and labor. We are all working together for common cause, which is uh, keep the families together. I also noticed on your website that there were a lot of different scenarios for the prayer services that go along with the fast services. And so I'd like for you to tell our listeners what your website is so that they could go and also become aware of those, the the prayer possibilities for them. Well, and thank you for mentioning that because really one of the core elements of the Fast for Families effort is prayer. The combination of fasting and prayer, we believe, is a deeply profound way to lift up the not just intention, but the real heart of the issue in a way that gets to the source of the real problem. So people can go to fastforfamilies.org and get a whole host of information, not just around where the bus tour is going, but as you said, guides to be able to help them do things in their own district. It's really important that people throughout the country get involved. Uh, This isn't just an immigrant issue. This is something that's good for the entire country. And we know that there's a lot of non-immigrants who really want this to happen, and we encourage everybody to go there and get involved. Rudy Lopez and T.J. Yoon, if there's any concluding remarks that you have, anything that you want to say to our listeners? I think the bottom line of the immigration reform is about how we treat another human being. You know, under God, we are all the same human being. And this is about respect and recognition of hardworking people. So I hope we can come to the conclusion and then make the right decision for our country, America. I want to thank uh, everybody for their support in the Bend area. Um, I think that uh, as we look at things going forward, there's three things that we want to ask people to do. First is to fast with us. Uh, starting Wednesday, this Wednesday, March 5th, and every Wednesday during Lent for people to fast that day or at least one meal that day. Doing that in solidarity really makes a difference. Second is to continue to pray, to be able to pray not just for the reform that's so important, but also for the people who are suffering because we don't have it. And the third is to act, and by acting is picking up the phone and calling Congressman Walden and urging him to take some action. He wants a solution. We want a solution. It's a matter of how we get there. We can't get there unless there's movement. So to pick up that phone and to call his office, that would be a big help. Thank you, Rudy Lopez and DJ Yoon from Fast for Families. Thank you for having us. Thank you.